Bueno, vamos con un poquito de retraso, pero por suerte tenemos un poquito de margen después, que en teoría el taller es de dos horas, pero eh, como no tenemos, no tenemos nada después se puede alargar un poquito sin, sin problema, porque la siguiente, la siguiente actividad es la, la representación que tenemos a las ocho y media. Bueno, eh, no sé si alguno no lo conocéis aún, a Scott Rankin, que viene de Australia. El año, eh, bueno, ayer estuvo dando una charla, hoy nos va a dar un taller. Sí que me ha, me ha dado así algunas indicaciones, algunas cosas... Perdón, ¿esta mañana? Perdón. <risa> y esta noche dará un concierto para aprovechar que viene ya... <risa> Vamos a explotarlo. ¿No vienes de Australia? Pues te vas a enterar. <risa> Disculpadme, ya no sé ni en qué día estoy. Eh, nada, solamente me ha pedido que, que, aunque de momento parezca que vaya a ser como una charla muy frontal, todo, no, que no nos asustemos, que en 20 minutillos o así se va a convertir todo en una actividad súper interactiva y que no os asustéis de su manera de funcionar, que va a ser todo como muy ágil, a lo mejor un poquito caótico, pero que, que lo tiene muy claro lo que va a hacer luego después con todos nosotros, para, sobre todo para dar soluciones y para trabajar eh, casos específicos. ¿No? Bueno, os dejo con él porque si no creo que me voy a poner yo y voy a dar el taller yo. Eh, nada, muchísimas gracias. ¿eh? Juan Pablo. Hello, uh, Ula, uh, what's your name? Uh, Beth. This is Beth. I don't know if you know Beth, but she's working with me. Um, thanks for your work. Um, so it's going to be a little bit chaotic today. We're going to be making five, together, five world-beating projects that are going to be incredibly popular internationally whilst solving issues in a community and whilst making you your hearts full and your aspirations come true. That's all we're doing today for an hour and a half. What I'd love to do, um, this morning was a bit formal for me, um, you know, having to speak behind the lectern. I'd love to, uh, to be provocative in the first bit and, and then um, we're going to be mainly working on the floor no, no theatre games, don't worry, no audience participation, but designing, design thinking in, in small groups. And the point is not to come up with a successful project, but is to pr provoke a new way of thinking. So, um, to kick us off, I'm going to introduce you to, um, with a video, to a project of ours that um, works with a very marginalised group in Australia. It's probably the same in Madrid. It's a group of young people who make um, cities safer wherever they are. It's a group of young people who are very altruistic um, and it's a, it's a group of young people who are incredibly skilled artistically and yet nobody sees what they're doing as artistic. And it's a hidden story and working with these young people we are going to make $1 billion, gross $1 billion, over the next 10 years, to put all that money, uh, the profit from that money, into what we call a corpus or like a trust account to fund work in disadvantaged communities. Because I'm sick of going with the begging bowl to, to government uh, who have this much money and then they split it up between all the arts groups so it becomes that much money and then they require all of us to work in difficult situations uh, in, in communities where we have to be very careful and we can easily do harm. So, I'm going to use that as a, as a start, as a bit of an inspiration for the scope with which I want us to think and then I'll explain a bit about the project later on. Could we, um, sound person, Roll the video number one and with the volume up.
So we want to use that to make, um, to gross a billion dollars, put away a hundred million dollars, and then use that money uh, in a runoff, the profits of that, to pay for projects for you. So you, you were late, you were the last one in, you were the last person in. When we've made all our money, would you come to me and I will fund a project of yours? Because you were the last in, you were very naughty, very recalcitrant, very bad. <laughs> so, so I will give you money if you come to me, if this makes money. Okay? So, so I hope that made sense. <laughs> you explain. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in future, when we've made a billion dollars, you come to me. <laughs> All right, I'll give you some. No. Um, so, skateboarding is in the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. The middle class in Asia is growing in their, their cash. They have a lot of money. They're very interested in skateboarding. Skateboarding has no spoken language. It's like stomp on wheels. Stomp the, yeah, on wheels. Every sound that's being made there is being made by skateboarders live um, because the, the bowl that they're skating on is like a big instrument. All the image, the projection on the floor is being made li live because they have infrared dots on their ankle and the projectors are tracking them in the, in the roof. So all the music, everything will be made live by skateboarders as they work as musicians and skateboarders and dancers and um, painters in light. It can play in any territory in the world, because so it can simultaneously be here in Madrid, it can be in China, it can be in the West End. That was a creative development that we made uh, in Melbourne just to, to prove that we could do it, and we've been working on it for five years. So it's premiering soon, and I will give you money. <laughs> The reason I wanted to point that out is for us in the community sector, we often forget that we are incredibly clever. And we often forget that sometimes the box office is part of our a toolkit. We can use the box office. We often forget that there are ways that we can fund these projects that are, that are very different to going to um, the, the Department of Culture and, and asking for those small grants. And that's what I want us to get to in the discussion today. To begin with, though, I want to throw some random ideas at you, some provocations, and I want you to get mad at me, OK? No, no violence, just internalise the anger. We... Uh, is the word... Uh, is the word... What's the Spanish word for, for bullshit? Namierda. 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 Hopeless. <laughs> so, we often bullshit ourselves pretending that people are interested in the theatre or in performance and the arts generally. More people globally watch birds than watch theatre. That's a fact. And yet we, we insist how, how important we are because we are in our own little microcosm of self-importance and mediocrity. Are you getting mad at me? <laughs> um, and, and yet David Mamet, you know the, the playwright, the American playwright, David Mamet? Yeah, whatever, another white guy, middle-aged, you know, <laughs> writing plays, who cares? Part of the problem, aren't we all? David Mamet um, uh, talks about the purpose of theatre in a, this small book um, called... Uh, I forget now, there's something of the knife. The purpose of theatre is not to fix the social fabric, not to incite the less perceptive to wake up and smell the coffee, not to preach to the converted about the delights or the burdens of middle-class life. The purpose of theatre is to inspire cleansing awe. Inspire cleansing awe. Now, these are embarrassing words to our Department of Culture, the people who fund us, the Australia Council. These are embar embarrassing words because they are forcing us as artists to think like uh, the manufacturing industry, 
they are forcing us to use in our work the language of war, the impacts, the target groups. These are words, the KPIs, the risk assessments. These are being forced on us and we give in and we write our applications in the language that they require. And yet our purpose, taking theatre as an example, is to inspire cleansing awe in the broadest way, the broadest groups in the community, including everyone. The word cleanse comes from the old English, cleansian, which means to purge, to purify and to chasten. Now, there's quite a few people in this world that you could do it with a bit of chastening, perhaps. The word inspire comes from the Latin which means to inflame and to blow into, to animate an idea or a purpose. And awe is Scandinavian, which means fearful veneration. Now for us, if we took that seriously and we were committed to that, to the the purpose behind that, and we also had the billion dollars, what a force we would be to reckon with to bring about incredible change globally through our art forms. And I want want us to take that seriously because it's very easy for us to fall into this mediocre trap and then believe our own rhetoric and have how good we are and how influential we are. I hope you're getting mad at me. What um, What is a briefing note for a government minister? A briefing note. So, say, a minister in, in the government will have, will have advisers um, in Spain, yeah, same as everywhere, and those advisers will have an enormous amount of business that has to come in front of the minister, and they will, they will need to reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce because the minister doesn't have time to read it all into little notes, briefing notes. How will you get your project in front of the Minister for Homeless Housing? Um, How will you write? What will be the the two principles that you will adhere to when you write your briefing notes? I'm not going to put the translation thing on. I'm going to tell you, okay? I want you to get 500,000 whatever the equivalent of euros. Is that a thing? For your project with homeless young people or whatever you do. You... If you don't mind me saying, you need to know how to write a briefing note so that you will make the, um, the assistant to the minister, the advisor to the minister, look good in their career. So you can't write more than one line, a dot point, dot point, dot point. You'll have to c- contain your entire beautiful artistic project in three or four dot points that go one line. Okay? <laughs> it's a skill. It's a poem. It's a haiku like a Japanese poem. It's just as skillful, yeah. nearly. Yeah. <laughs> Who has put together a business case for their projects to go to, uh, what's it called, Banksia or Bankia? Uh, the big corporates, the telcos, business case. Have you put, put one together? Has, who's put together a business case to prove to big business that they should invest a million dollars in, in your work with refugees? Have you? Has anyone done a business case? Great. Here is a colourful business case. We can just pass it around. I'm not being a pretentious wanker, as we would say in Australia. I'm not pushing our thing. Just pass that around. It gives a format for how you move busy corporate people through looking at your project to a point where they want to put resource into the, the valuable work that you're doing in disadvantaged communities. It's an art form. It's like writing a book. You need great photographers, you need great artists working with you. And you all know them. When you go out for your, you know, uh, uh, dinner at at 11 o'clock at night, which is a fantastic thing, um, and have a glass of wine, you're meeting with photographers, you're meeting with authors, you're you're getting drunk and and making love to these people. So, So we are together incredibly skilled at having the best potential to put together a business case to make the case for the people that you work with, who, who may be, I don't, I don't know, they may be people with dementia, to make that case. And yet, we fall down because we don't do it. We do not enter into that world. Do you know why? 
we're slack and we don't care that more people are watching birds than theatre. It doesn't matter to us as long as we get our little grants that we can just pay for our tiny flat that we're sharing with two other artists. <laughs> that, that is us being irresponsible with this incredible talent that, that everybody in the room has. So, I don't even know what I'm going on about, really. <laughs> I want to just finish this, this little bit by a couple of other provocations. I want us to think about the... Te about the here's, here's an idea. It's very hard in the arts, especially the high arts, to use the word beautiful. It's very easy with Real Madrid, with uh, football, to call it the beautiful game. How ironic. It's very hard in the arts now to... to the people dismiss the term beautiful. And in football, they, they adore the nuance of the game. And there's something in that. And I think we have a fear of virtuosity. We... I call it DIY, do it yourself. I don't know if that's an expression here, like at the hardware shop and then you build your own cupboard and it falls over. DIY virtuosity. Virtuosity in, in the areas that we work in, and I wish I knew, our, I wish I'd read everybody's bio so I knew exactly what you do. Virtuosity is much harder in the work that we're attempting to do than it is in playing the cello, the cello, the violin. It's much harder. There are many more things to, to take into consideration in our work, in communities, to make sure we do no harm and then advocate for the issue and provide an opportunity for change and sustain the change and not build dependency and make great art and leave the community um, having learnt with them in the co-creation. That is incredibly difficult. But we fear virtuosity and applying it to that because we think virtuosity is about the way you play the piano. And it is, but the same principles apply to what we do. And we must commit to that and say to ourselves, like I said this morning, the only thing that matters is the, the, the virtuosity, the perfect quality of the work that we're making, the art that we're making, with co-creating with communities. And at the same time, the only thing that matters is the journey that the individuals in that community and the community go on when we're making that art. And we have to be committed in this non... what we would say is a non-binary way, like a, it's non-linear. It's these two at once, and it's the tension between the two. That's where the virtuosity comes from, and that's our job. So... I'm just going to illustrate a couple of things. Scarcity. Scarcity culture? Is that, a, is that a term used here? When a sector is under siege, when people are under siege because the grants are getting smaller and the work is getting bigger and the mortgage is get, the rent is going up, we start to become territorial about the money and about your work over mine, and we start just dismissing your work, and because mine's slightly better. And that comes, that territorial way of working, which is not collegiate, comes from a scarcity culture that is forced on us by the cultural funding bodies and the policy, and that in budgets, the first thing that gets slashed is culture in all countries. Am I making sense? Yeah. yeah. We, we have to commit to not being um, territorial with each other, sharing ideas. We have to commit to giving our last dollar to somebody else's project. Now, this morning I talked about big art and said that we've raised $50 million in 25 years, and that sounds like a lot of money. But I can tell you that we will be broke in six weeks. All my staff will be laid off in six weeks from now. When we're going well, we have eight to ten weeks. When we're going not well, we have two to three weeks. So we're doing all right. And we're in, we are all in the same boat. It, it scales up, sure. Um, but we all live within this scarcity culture and we must open ourselves to other people 
and not, to, not be territorial. The, uh, the last thing that I want to just talk about, or two things, is we must stop believing our own dogma. We're community artists, sure, but often we allow that to say we will be mediocre in the work that we create and to, because we're working with people who don't have the talent, because we can't use the judgments of the big theatre houses to judge the work that we're making down here. That's bullshit. It, it is more, it's more to the point that, that and I'm going to be ruthless here, in Australia, artists who haven't gone and done the hard yards often end up working in community arts. Artists who have gone the hard yards, gone a long way, and burnt out and their soul is, is hurts and they have no longer have the energy, they end up in, in the community arts. We have to be realistic about these things. There is a lot of mediocrity in the work that we make and we often believe our own dogma and call it something that it isn't and then say, keep the critics away because this is about the community. That is another way of letting the disadvantaged community down and making them suffer disadvantage more. We need to be more excellent. We need to maintain the values and the integrity on the ground where we're working, but we need to bring the excellence and the virtuosity through so that we are with them providing the opportunity for them to speak on behalf of the issues that they're going through to bring about change. And it's not easy to do. Now, an illustration of that is we suffered from the same thing. I'm scared, I blush, I'm shy, I'm a shy guy. And I hate a bad critic, a bad critique, a bad review. The, my favourite, which I hated it so much I put it at the top of my CV, said, this is the kind of theatre, this is the kind of show that is ruining Australian theatre. <laughs> it's quite a good one. So, it was true. Um, thank God. <laughs> Australian theatre is shit. <laughs> so what we did, uh, what we began to do was instead of hiding the critic over there and saying stay, stay away, we invited the critics into the process in the community where the work was at its poorest and we invited them as arts practitioners into relationship, into a relationship with the community where they were critiquing the process and then they came on the journey, the narrative journey, to when the show was playing in national and international festivals or when the film was playing. It was very interesting to see that this community, with no, no artistic skills, apparently, changed the way of working of these critics who are from the high end of the arts. So, those are some provocations. I want us to think about us taking responsibility for self-funding large parts of our project. I want us to think in scale and be ambitious um, and, we're going to, and what we will be doing is um, moving into a workshop um, that'll go for about an hour and ten minutes where we're going to design uh, some projects and, and use some design thinking. There's a few different criteria that we use and this is going to be confusing, you might want to note it down. I was going to try and Google Translate and put it on a sheet and give it to you but... You <laughs> You might have to think about this because we're going to use a series of matrix, a series of overlays to help us to think in, with a big scale. The first three are the ones from this morning. The urgencies, a global urgency, a community urgency and a personal urgency, if you've got those three. And then there's three more concepts that I want to introduce to you. The first one I'm calling lines of provenance. Lines of provenance are the influences that have led us and shaped us as artists and, sh and are shaping our projects. So if you were there this morning, it was a really interesting question, I don't know if you're here now, but to, to ask me about my childhood and growing up on a boat and um, the police chucking us out and those, those things, they, they have clearly shaped me and it's a line of provenance with my interest in social justice. And of course, 
all of us will have authors from around the world, um, senior statespeople, women with great talent who have worked in communities and written that down. All of that forms these lines of provenance that are going to feed into our thinking. They are also the dying stars, stars that are going out, dying stars of community arts. They're the things that were so brilliant before. Um, Paolo Friers, I don't know if that's a, or uh, Augusto, uh, what's his name, ba Baal, you know, all the, thank you, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, so all of those authors, they, they are of a time and they're great and we stand on their shoulders now. But, the, but all community arts are dying stars in these lines of provenance feeding into, into our projects. It'll be your previous knowledge. It could be that you're coming from industrial design and you're now feeding that into community arts. It could be that you're coming from speech pathology, sir, and that'll feed into, into projects. And I want us to keep them on the table, those lines of provenance. The, se the, the second uh, thing I want us to think about that's in the middle is the lens of the project. So the lines of provenance come in to the lens of the project that we're trying to design, as in a camera. So it's coming into that project. And then the third aspect of it, which is where there is great value, it comes during and after the project, and I'm calling them flows of positive consequences. So they're not lines of consequence, they're flows of consequence. And they are things that we won't even know of sometimes. It'll be when... It'll be when you inspired a young artist who really wanted to, to get involved in community arts. It'll be, when, um, it'll be when a government minister was, who seemed untouchable was deeply touched because a story in, in the show that you, you two created as a collaboration was suddenly um, touching something that happened his, in his life and he wanted to change a policy lever in his government and then Treasury released more money for, for mental health for instance, They're, and you didn't even know. But these are flows of consequence and we need to be mindful of them. So, when we're looking at the... This is where it gets complicated. When we're looking at the, the um, project in the middle, the lens, we need to introduce those five things of the individual domains, domain of change, those five domains of change, individual, community, art national policy and knowledge transfer because each one of those drives dollars to disadvantaged communities. For instance, who... I don't know how the interpreter will go with this word, but has anyone heard the term autocide? So, it's, it's like suicide in a car. And it's a phenomenon in Australia, in these, in these it's, the, it's this un, unknown thing almost in Australia, in rural areas, these vast rural, you know, Australia's the size of Europe, these vast rural places with these straight roads. Young men do not want to embarrass their mother predominantly by killing them, by topping themselves, by doing this. Instead, they'll have, they will rehearse their death with a tree on a corner and they'll go backwards and forth and sometimes they'll be seen doing it and then they'll, they will take their own life. And I'm sorry if I'm sure some of us in this room have um, people in our families, etc., and friends who have been through a terrible experience of suicide. I'm sorry to provoke that. In Australia, that happens for young men. If a young man... Let me just contextualise. In my country, there's only 23 million people. Um, there's one high school so a high school about, say, 1,500 people, young people, kill themselves every year of high school age. 20,000 try and fail. Now, the stats in Spain are probably similar. Young men use cars to do that. If a young man fails to kill himself, that non-suicide, his non-death, will immediately cost the taxpayer 25 million. So if a project working with young people because he'll be a paraplegic or a quadriplegic. 
So if a project that you're running with young men that's preventing autocide and is costing 500,000 a year is going to stop two, maybe three um, suicides, autocides, you're saving the government $74 million. And it's those kinds of arguments that we need to be able, able to make. So if you look at the five domains, we can go, yeah, sure, we work with individuals, we work with communities, we work with, um, with art and policy, etc. But if we think of working with individuals as a domain of change that has an enormous amount of potential value in, in funding that you'll be able to release to your community, it becomes, it's working in two ways, for the young person, but for future young people because you can, you can collect the evidence, make the case, put together the briefing notes, whoever that was, put together the briefing notes, speak to the minister, see that they can trial that project, and then from that, if it's successful, they can release money. Now, I know that probably doesn't sound like the kind of thing that happens in Spain, in the arts, but it is the kind of thing that happens in the, in the manufacturing industry, in the tech industries. It happens everywhere. It doesn't happen in the arts and in the community arts sector because we don't make the case. So, when you think about the five domains of change, I want us to be thinking in that big picture about the potential flows of consequence that can make it much, much easier for us to work in the future. Do you know what I mean? The release of funding is one of them. Um, so, <laughs> let me just check where I'm up to. Okay. So, what we're going to do, without using a theatre exercise, <laughs> we're going to divide into groups. And I want a couple of volunteers who can get out of doing the exercise um, and can sit at this table if they want. And your job will be to build on this list, of which you can all take a photo later with your camera. On here are 10 international um, large big picture funders who you should all be applying to and probably you are. Is anyone applying to the David and Lucille Packard Foundation for your work? To the Oak Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates, must be someone, surely. Right, let me, let me provoke once more. 66 people in America, which is the wealthiest, still the wealthiest country in the world, 66 people control half the wealth. You can make 66 con phone calls in, in an afternoon. Those, now, we can go, that is immoral that those people control half that country's wealth. Or we can also go, it is immoral and it's also an opportunity because it reduces the number of people we need to talk to. And yes, they will have very solid gatekeepers in front of them to make sure you don't call them. Well, I guarantee that George Clooney could call Bill Gates or Melinda, Melinda Gates. I guarantee it probably on speed dial. I guarantee that you could get to George Clooney in f five phone calls. I mean, you could get to Bill Gates via George Clooney in five calls. And we're going to play this later on, six degrees of separation for all the people that we, we work on. If you call me, <laughs> I'll call Jen Robinson, who works for, who's a a um, human rights lawyer working in Doherty Street with Jeffrey Robertson, who's a friend of Amal's. Anybody want to give me a call? <laughs> there you go. Um, and Amal Clooney, who has got a mouth on her like a trooper, that's George's wife, or she, George is her husband. She swears like you wouldn't believe, also drinks a lot, and, and anyway. Um, she will talk to George, so you, that's pillow talk, that's, you don't need that phone call. And George will call Melinda Gates about this incredible project that you're running. Okay? That's five degrees of separation. And we need to do that in our work, because only 66 people control all that, that, 
wealth in America. So that's just an illustration, but there will be two people who will be serving the group on your smartphones, looking these up, finding out um, the things that they want to fund, and then I want you, if you're going to get out of the other work, to come up with five more online, find them. Who wants to be the volunteer for that? You get out of this other thing where you have to talk to people. Two volunteers. It's going very well. <laughs> we'll come back to that. I'll do it myself. Okay, so if we could divide into five groups, and where's Juan Pablo? Pablo, you can... I love you, I love you. We're going to... There you go, start, get to work. So we need to know the things that they fund, what they're interested in, and, um, and also for you to find five other international funders to, to add to the list. Is that clear? Nearly clear. Yeah. Um, um, you need to start researching what they fund, because I guarantee they'll fund things that'll happen in the room, and then we'll find your five more once you see what everybody's doing. So, it might be a little uncomfortable, but we're going to move out of the seats up here into areas on the stage. <laughs> And we're going to get big sheets of paper, Juan Pablo. Um, and we're going to, to begin to work on a project. I'm going to be coming around with um, my translator. <laughs> and we're going to be, I'm going to be provoking you to think about things that are going to work well or not work well. So you need to think about a global issue a community issue which illustrates the global issue, which you are passionate about, and then you need to think about the lines of provenance, and you need to let that feed into the design of what the project is going to be, and you need to think about the, the flows of consequence that are going to come from the project. So to do that, you'll have the five domains of change. What, what are you passionate about? You'll have to translate for me. What, what is your passion? What issue are you passionate about? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, uh, the way that it is run I love you. Okay, so you want to completely remake. Uh, you want to completely remake um, education. Okay. <laughs> Can we reduce that to which bit of education? Early childhood. Uh, early childhood. Perfect. Play is the work of childhood. That's the title of your project. Gather 10 people. Go and sit over there. Get to work. Okay? That is the issue that's going to be central to the project. It's a global issue. It's a community issue. It has to speak loudly. You need to think about the lines of provenance, who, who the key people are. You need to think about the project itself, the flows, out, the con flows of consequence, and then we'll be playing six degrees of separation. How much money do you want? Quickly. Money is not... And I'm going to be ruthless here. Money matters. How much do you want? One million? One million? Two. Two. One billion. One billion. Yes. Oh, <laughs> ambitious. Okay. One billion. We're going to have to get to work. Could, you, could this group of people uh, on that side go with... What's your name? Rosa. 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 Gr Rose. 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 Okay. Do it yourself. <laughs> Sorry. I apologise. I'm very bad. Um, just form a group. It's early childhood education, transforming it, using Spain as central to that. And then uh, it's a billion dollar project, which is not that much, and it's going to change education in the West or globally. It's up to you. Right? And I'm going to make you pull it in, because remember, that's the global issue. You need a community issue that illustrates brilliantly your ambition. All right. I'm going to help. I'm going to just do it like this. Come down. This is good. Form a group here. About probably 15 or, you know, whatever you think, 10. Keep going. We'll sit on the ground. I hope this, that's okay. Get some paper. What are you wandering around for, Juan Pablo? Get paper and pens to people. Another group here. Yeah, you can. We'll get you a chair. A chair for the genius. Yeah. Um, we, can we form another group? You might have to move back a bit.
Yes, let's move this back a bit. Is that all right? Oops. I think I just dropped a microphone. Don't tell anyone. Um, yes, just uh, we'll see how we go. Yeah, just form another group here. Can we form one more group here? You can stay there if you want. We'll form one around you. Okay. How many groups have we got? We need, we need one more group. Can you squeeze up that way a little? Can we form one more group here with you? You can use some of the seats and squeeze it in this way. Good. Ah, we need more here, yeah. There's too many in this group, really, isn't there? to to speak directly with the groups? Um, me, and I will tell the translator for not translating everything to everyone. Um, yeah, just directly to the group. So can somebody be with me? Or? Yeah, yeah, I will be. There will be someone. Right? Okay. You give um, give one sheet. Uh, just want um, I want one big sheet. I want a bit for each. Yeah. How many have we got here? That's all right? Oh, as many as you make. That's all right. You could come in. Join this one. Yeah. We have to choose an issue. An issue, yes. 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 Okay. Choose your issue. It's up to you. Fight it out. If you don't like it, be an anarchist and leave and go and make your own group over there, okay? Or be collegiate and work together in a beautiful way. I'm, where's my trans... Uh, hello. Hello. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. What's your... Isabel. Isabel Scott. I don't, um, ah. I don't need this anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. Could, is the sound listening to me? Thank <laughs> you. 
objetivo para entender que, que vamos a hacer una de las cosas que socialmente no lo
de Cristo, a lo largo de este momento, sabes que es por la tarde de llegar, pues no me quedé en este
Move on. 
it is very costly and, and mostly housing stock used to be in, in places that are being gentrified. So public housing is under pressure.
Stay where you are in your groups. About your knees, but uh, this project over here is working with people with poor knees, so that's going to be good. What we're going to do is, my trusty help, I'm sorry I didn't ask Amaya. your name. Amaya is going to be translating. I'll be on the mic so she can hear me. We are going to present to each other and then this trusty group here who are searching for the funding for all of you, when you've presented your um, project, we will be asking them to suggest some funding, international global funding bodies that you can go to for the one million euro that you want. Vamos okay? Thank you. de la financiación, este pequeño grupo de aquí, tomará la decisión acerca de a quién se financia. Perdón, que estoy dando la espalda. ¿Vale? ¿Puedes coger el micro? Eh, I think I should go back into the booth now. One, one, one minute. I just want to say... Ahora, ahora, ahora salimos, el, el, la interpretación saldrá ahora desde la cabina, pero de, acabamos esta parte de la presentación aquí ahora. I just want to say, every idea in this room is a good idea. Todas las ideas que hemos visto hasta ahora son ideas muy buenas, las que hemos visto en la sala. The exercise is very hard. El ejercicio ya sé que es muy difícil. We're trying to push for a new way of thinking that is proud of our work and thinking in big ways. Estamos intentando pensar de forma distinta como solemos plantearnos las cosas. Solemos ir desde lo pequeñito y ahora tenemos que salir a lo grande, grande. So when each group presents, some may be successful, some may not. And that's good. It's part of the process. Parte del proceso de aprendizaje exige también el saber que no siempre consigue uno la financiación o el objetivo que se haya planteado. Con lo cual, no todos los grupos necesariamente vais a conseguir financiación. Es parte del proceso. And so you must go into your tiny box. Y yo me voy a mi cajita. <laughs> Los, los aparatos para la traducción suya y los micros se los dejamos a quien vaya a hacer la presentación. Hang on, is this my one? This is not my one. Uh, ah. He's going to be hearing it all in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Um, thank you. So, if we're in our small box. Have we got our microphone, our headsets on? Everybody? No? Okay, you're good. Let's begin with this group over here. <laughs> A round of applause for the uh, Early Childhood Education Group. <laughs> Does everyone know you? Does everyone in the room, people know you? Who, who are you? Eh, soy Federico, vengo de Menorca, de una organización de circo que se llama Circaos. Thank you, Fre Federico. Go. Bueno, nosotros eh, identificamos los cinco puntos que se habían marcado y el foco del proyecto creemos que es el, la repoblación a través de la escuela o... ¿Me puedes ayudar? Sí. En lo que has escrito, el foco, proyecto. Vale. Ok. Integración en los medios naturales y la recuperación de las tradiciones culturales. Vale. Este es el, un poco el foco principal. Y. Vale, en zonas rurales, que somos muchos. Y se han muchos inputs. Luego, eh, el, la urgencia comunitaria que identificamos es la repoblación rural, ¿sí? repoblación de zonas rurales, y eh, también identificamos crear eh, eh, personas autónomas eh, y enlazarlas con su, con su territorio. ¿sí? 
crear eh, repoblación rural, si hay algo que no me decís, ¿vale? y crear personas autónomas y saber enlazarlas con su territorio. No, repoblación rural. Ah, perdón. Eh, crear personas autónomas, si han entendido, que, que tengan autonomía propia. ¿Sí? Eh, ok, just bueno, go. Lo siento, so, sí. Sorry to interrupt, I'm going to be ruthless here. So, could you go through the, the individuals that you're working with? Just tell mm. me. Just okay. eh, el objetivo con los individuales es la educación emocional. Eh, no forzar y, y no uniformizar el aprendizaje. Y el grupo con el que estábamos trabajando son eh, niños de 6 a 12 años que viven en poblaciones rurales. Por ejemplo, hemos focalizado en Orense, que es una eh, ciudad o, o una zona rural del norte en Galicia. Ok, good. Um, and, and tell me about the national domain. The, the, the national policy domain. ¿Qué quiere decir? Can you hear? La urgencia. La urgencia global. Um, the, the global need. Yeah, uh, so, individual, community, um, okay. policy or national. Ok. Cambia el, el paradigma global es cambiar el, el sistema educativo en la infancia, eh, en la educación primaria y pública. Y estamos hablando de zonas rurales. Vale. Y el, la metodología que vamos a utilizar es la utilización del arte como, como modelo central en la educación. ¿verdad? Inclusiva. Ok. Sí. All, all right. Um, so we just hold there because we're short of time. Uh, is the translation coming through? For? Repito. So we're going to um, just because we don't have much time, we're just going to hold there, and I'm going to jump in and be um, brutal, um, and then we're going to ask. Actually, we'll ask you first. Um, so we've got uh, primary school education, which would include things like literacy. We've got um, uh, rural areas. Uh, we've got disadvantaged rural areas, maybe. Mm. Yes. Yep. Uh, and resettlement. Was that a, yep? Okay, did you find, could you tell us um, any of the funding bodies that might fund this project? Sorry. Pues yo creo que os podríais dirigir a oakfood.org, es o a k f u d .org. Está dirigido por una familia eh, entre, bueno, los diferentes las diferentes áreas que ellos apoyan una de ellas es la de viviendas y personas sin hogar eh, a lo mejor los grupos rurales que decís vosotros sí tienen hogar pero dudo que estén a lo mejor no en, en condiciones eh, favorables entonces bueno ellos mejoran el bienestar económico y social de jóvenes adultos y familias marginados eh, han llegado a dar 35 donaciones de 24 millones de dólares eh, luego por otra parte son los derechos, eh, perdón, la página, sí, o a k -F -U -D punto Otro de los puntos es los derechos humanos internacionales, eh, buscan pues eso, proteger y promover los derechos humanos, Creo que podríais abordarlo también por ahí. Han llegado a, a subvencionar eh, 55 proyectos con un total de 25 millones de dólares. Y eh, dados los proyectos que han ido eh, subvencionando de en países como Brasil, la India, Dinamarca, Zimbabue, creo que, en, por ejemplo, en Brasil eh, han llegado a subvencionar 11 proyectos con 2 millones de dólares protegiendo espacios urbanos mejorando la movilidad entre comunidades desfavorecidas. Y, por ejemplo, en la India la pobreza y la injusticia social eh, y en Dinamarca mejorar la vida de grupos vulnerables marginados con casi 5 millones de dólares. Ok, that's good. That's great. So we can see that there, out there globally there are people who will want to fund this project. Now, 
here's the thing. This project will not get funded because your scope um, is too wide. <laughs> your, your scope is too broad. Uh, so if you could pull it in, be very, very specific in each one of those five domains and, and really hone it down, there is, it, um, central to what you're suggesting, one of the great vexed, one of the great difficult areas um, of uh, contemporary society in the 21st century. So with a lot of discipline, getting over some of the, the thing that we all do as community artists, which is to, um, to go too big, to want to do everything at one time, and, and then we find ourselves sitting in our own little backwater, uh, even though it's motivated by the very best of intentions. But these people are ruthless. They're good, but they're ruthless, because aside from this group, there's... 150 other groups who are wanting to do something similar, and I want to get this town funded. So, what your group has done is begin to look at design thinking when it comes to community dramaturgies by overlaying those things, thinking about the lines of provenance, thinking about the lens of the project, the five domains of change in the proje project, and that triggers the potential for at least five different mechanisms of funding, and then you, th you design into it the flows of consequence, uh, and from that you'll find that more and more projects will grow. So thank you, thank this group for, for their work. That one wouldn't get funded as yet. <laughs> We're going to have to be la, quick. Si, for si, la razón por la que no es financiada es porque es muy amplio el espectro y cuál sería la, la solución como reducir a qué no entiendo eso yeah okay let's let's talk afterwards my my company our reason for being is rural and remote communities and the quality of life and, and well-being in those communities it is difficult but if we wanted to fund the range of things that you were talking about, we would split them into separate projects. Now, what I would suggest, and what we do as an organisation, is to work in streams, not projects. Because all these issues are very complex and one project can't do it all. And if we get locked into project-based funding, then we're going to be uh, applying for small amounts of money, we'll do the project and then we'll have to leave the community. We'll do another, pro oh, we have to go, oh, we have to go. So we, be we begin to do harm even though while we're do doing good. Yep, but it's a very valid question and I wish we had another two hours because we would spend longer and tease that out. Um, let's go with Juan Pablo. Have you got the microphone, my dear friend? Excellent. <laughs> let's go with this group over here. And we need to be pretty quick because um, you've all, all got to go and have vino tinto or something. I don't even know what to do. Okay. Let's go with great confidence. Sorry. Sorry, we decided that uh, when we are men and women in a group, we don't know why, but they always men ended up talking, so we decided to. I'm not good at talking, but I'm going to do it just for this. Excellent oh, perdona, work. Perdona. Very good. Thank Se you. Olla, vale. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, pues he dicho eso, que, que estábamos comentando que siempre que hay hombres y mujeres, como que siempre, no sé, que, que a nosotras nos da más vergüenza, y de hecho me da mucha vergüenza, pero vamos a romper esa, <laughs> esa, esa barrera. Eh, bueno. Pues eh, nuestro proyecto eh, a los tres niveles, el individual, el comunitario y el global. Entonces, eh, a nivel individual, lo que, lo que queremos eh, combatir es eh, la, la soledad en las personas mayores y la pérdida de, del papel ¿no? que, tienen, que han perdido. Eh, a nivel comunitario, nos centraríamos en una zona concreta, que sería la zona de, de Teruel, porque está sufriendo, bueno, como muchas otras zonas en España, mucha despoblación, también como en Orense, como vuestro proyecto. Y, y, y luego a nivel global, eh, bueno, tenemos una frase que lo que queremos combatir es el, el genocidio en el primer mundo el, de las personas mayores, ¿no? a través de, de esa pérdida de papel que tienen en, en la sociedad. Um. 
Gracias. Ah, vale, bueno, y entonces ya hemos decidido irnos como a la parte más práctica, ¿no? ¿Cómo vamos a hacer esto? ¿Cómo vamos a, 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 a dinamizar un territorio concreto, ¿no? Que sería, por ejemplo, pues no sé, la zona de, digo, por ejemplo, del Bajo Aragón, ¿no? En, en Teruel, que cada vez tiene menos gente y la gente que queda es gente mayor, eh, no tiene un papel porque no tiene, eh, bueno, eh, han perdido, la gente joven ya se ha ido y como que digamos están abocados a, o a ir a la ciudad a una, a una residencia o o no participar ¿no? en la vida social. Entonces, en nivel individual lo que queremos hacer es recuperar el patrimonio cultural que esas personas mayores tienen porque tienen conocimientos, eh, tienen destrezas, tienen memoria, saben can canciones, saben bailes, eh, tienen muchísimas cosas que compartir. Eh, entonces, la primera cosa que haríamos sería indagar todas esas cosas que tienen que compartir eh, con la sociedad. ¿no? Eh, y lo haríamos... Eh, a nivel, eh, querríamos hacerlo intergeneracionalmente, entonces juntaríamos a la gente mayor y a la gente, a la gente joven que todavía está por allí para, para ver de qué manera pueden eh, interactuar e intercambiar saberes. Eh, y querríamos con esto pues, hacer que aflorara también eh, su pues, autoestima y su papel, ¿no? como, como he dicho. Eh, en el nivel segundo... Eh, nuestro objetivo es dinamizar ¿no? estos pueblos, entonces lo que vamos a crear son talleres artísticos concretos en los que, por ejemplo, eh, pues, eh, se enseña, una persona mayor enseña a un grupo de jóvenes una, una danza concreta, ¿no? una danza tradicional, eh, querríamos organizar residencias artísticas para generar un interés, entonces traeríamos, porque bueno, el problema con estas cosas es generalmente el, el los espacios y, y bueno, el alojamiento, la comida y todo eso, entonces las personas mayores se involucrarían en este aspecto eh, ofreciendo lugares, ofreciendo espacios, ¿no? porque eh, realmente lo que tienen es tiempo, entonces podrían eh, también compartir su, su, su espacio, su tiempo y en las residencias eh, estos artistas coordinarían los talleres en los que jóvenes y mayores están intercambiando eh, todos estos conocimientos. Um, y... Luego, en el tercer nivel, eh, lo que querríamos hacer con esto sería crear un eh, festival artístico, un festival, de, un festival de artes multidisciplinar, que, porque esto sería, por ejemplo, digamos, el, el trabajo durante cuatro meses, o podría ir creciendo, pero en principio cuatro meses, y después culminaría en un, en un festival artístico que traería turismo al pueblo, eh, revitalizaría bueno, la, el aumentaría la autoestima de las personas mayores porque lo pondrían en marcha, sería una cosa pues, muy turística, muy bonita. Luego, con el, con el tiempo, otro nivel que querríamos hacer es crear una app, como una, una aplicación en la que si a ti te interesan, por ejemplo, eh, las sardanas, ¿no? porque sería un modelo que se, se viralizaría ¿no? en, la, en, la, en, la, en el territorio español. Y entonces tú podrías eh, pues visitar esta app para ver que bailes tradicionales, que maneras de tejer en cada zona, donde hay, donde puedes ir a visitar, o eh, bueno, estos conocimientos ¿no? que, se, que se trasladaran a la tecnología. Um, en el punto 4, eh, lo, que, lo que querríamos eh, transmitir digamos, a, a, los, a los gobiernos y a los que hacen las leyes es que eh, aumentando sus capacidades, ganando un nivel activo en la sociedad, estamos reduciendo el coste de los gobiernos en, en la dependencia de los mayores. Eh, perdón, ah, teníamos una frase muy chula. Que, sí, que sería, ¿la, ¿la quieres decir tú? No. ¿No? Vale. Bueno, pues la frase que habían creado es que, bueno, la sociedad eh, y la despoblación al final nos, nos cuesta más dinero, es más caro. Y nuestra so la soledad, perdón. Y la solución es dinamizar los territorios envejecidos con actividades artísticas intergeneracionales. Y nuestro nombre, además, sería Creativi Edades. Creative, eh, creative edades, ¿no? Este juego de, de palabras. Y ya lo último, la promoción y la difusión, eh, pues, bueno, sí, sería como la, la última parte, ¿no? Como la, el transfer, la, transferir el conocimiento. Eh, por una parte, cambiamos el concepto de, mental que tenemos de, de, del papel de las, de las personas mayores en, en la sociedad. Eh, después hacemos un modelo que puede ser trasladado a otras zonas rurales, que en realidad es, es, es fácil hacerlo. Y, y bueno, y creamos algo como muy vistoso y que, que llega a mucha gente porque a través de diferentes vías. Ya está. Good. 
Good. And um, don't ever say that you're not a very good public speaker again for as long as you live, OK? Um, there's a lot in that. Similarly to the comment here, uh, if we think about the funding potentials of it, um, there is heritage and culture and tourism and festivals. There is young people and their well-being. There is the intergenerational transfer of um, knowledge and education. There is health. Uh, there is palliative care, perhaps. There's potentially the revitalization of this particular place that you're suggesting. Um, and you are dealing with uh, what I think is an international um, disgrace, and that is the slow genocide that we inflict on elderly people once they've lost our, the useful, their usefulness to the, the GDP, the gross domestic product. Um, so there is something in this. It's, it's much too wide, much too broad, um, but there is a way of communicating this that you could, could get to if we had another two hours. And I'm just going to introduce the idea again because it's where I want to leave the afternoon. And that is that all communities are systems. And so, again, if we were to, to work with any individual area that you've discussed, uh, we could run a project um, for that particular thing, for young people, for revitalisation, for traditional dance, etc. And what you're doing is putting together a stream of projects, a stream which is about um, well, well-being and is focused on the elderly. And that is, that is the new way to be thinking. Cultural um, uh, councils in government, etc., departments in government, are way behind the, the eight ball there. They, they are funding in small projects. Do you know why? Because it's more risk averse. It, they come to an end and you can acquit the grant and they can go, phew, well, nobody, we didn't get in trouble. My minister didn't get in trouble. So, but it's very easy to do harm when we think in small project funding. So that is a learning so far from both these groups. And that could be pulled together. And I think it's, it'll be tough because the, the global genocide, the slow genocide of the elderly and people with, with a, a disability uh, are really critical areas. Policy is pulling it down and down and down. So another round of applause. Oh, no, we've got to go to your funding. Sorry. Four or five funding ideas because we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, on the microphone. Microphone. Bueno, yo es que me tengo que ir ya. Entonces, <risa> perdón. Sure. Eh, eh, entonces, eh, bueno, pues yo propondría eh, la de Melon. Eh, es m e l l o -N punto -R -G, eh, Porque ellos buscan fortalecer, promover y defender las contribuciones de las humanidades y las artes para el florecimiento humano y el, y el bienestar de las sociedades. Y otorga subvenciones, entre otras cosas, al arte y al patrimonio cultural. Entonces, creo que por ahí podríais intentar algo. Eh, la dotación en 2016 fue de 6 billones de dólares, eh, subvenciones otorgadas de 287 millones de dólares, entonces creo que a lo mejor por unos miles de euros os pueden ayudar. <risa> y okay. luego Gates Foundation es eh, gatesfoundation.org eh, Creo que también eh, apoyan mucho la investigación, eh, investigaciones médicas, sanitarias y, y también en recursos, dan eh, recursos a, a personas eh, con falta de, de éxito eh, a nivel vital, porque además habla de eh, vida y escuela. Y también un gran apoyo a las mujeres y a los niños, sobre todo. Entonces, uh -huh. sí. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry, it's not on the mic, so I can't hear. But um, so we might just hold there, because I, we are running rapidly out of time. Thank you for your your work. Again, it illustrates that if we look globally, we we find um, there are com there are global communities. There are people interested in all these areas wherever we are, and there are billions of dollars that we can access. So, thank you. Um, we're going to move quite quickly now. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with... <laughs> That's... <laughs>
Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll restrict this. We'll keep it really quick. It's good if we failed. It's fine if we failed. Thank you. A ver, eh, hablo un poco, eh, no hemos llegado a un, a un consenso. El tema era, era complicado, ¿vale? Porque el tema global, digamos que intentábamos plasmar y intentar cómo hacer los cinco puntos, era los desahucios, o sea, tela. Entonces, eh, ha habido mucho, muchos argumentos por diferentes... Eh, compañeros y compañeras que ha estado muy bien, ¿eh? el debate ha estado fenomenal de aquí se podía empezar a crear el ¿Qué? proyecto creo que ese es el resultado ¿no? que puedo dar en cuanto al equipo que hemos formado eh, yo a nivel personal ya lo que sí podría decir es que creo que aquí se ha olvidado un poco la historia de que la base de todo es los derechos humanos entonces estoy de acuerdo con una de las compañeras que al final se ha planteado desde ahí porque hemos hablado del Ministerio de Vivienda, de Asuntos Sociales, eh, de Justicia, de Interior. O sea, hay tantos a los que hay que dar un tirón de orejas que, que es complicado porque hay mucha vulnerabilidad por las familias que padecen los desahucios y, y por el alto nivel de suicidios, de cómo se quedan las personas en estas situaciones. Entonces, el tema era demasiado complicado para en 40 minutos así poder plantear un trabajo como este. Sí creo que ha sido fructífero, que no hemos conocido y hemos debatido bastante y a partir de ahora creo que estamos en el momento de empezar a crear un poco esa petición, no sé a dónde, pero yo sí que me ha quedado claro que la base de todo está en el respeto a los derechos humanos y es que eso... Hay que exigirlo, no se puede pedir. Ok. Thank you. Sí, el punto de partida, de verdad, hemos hecho, inventado un caso común. Y el punto de partida y el objetivo común era que los desahucios tienen que desaparecer. O sea, no tienen que existir. Y las políticas sociales gubernamentales tienen que cambiar. Y si no se cambia, hay que hacer que cambien. O sea, no es cuestión de que eh, paremos los desahucios. No, los desahucios por derecho, tienen que desaparecer. Ese okay. es el objetivo, creo, si no me equivoco, común, que queremos plantear. El caso de Fátima era una mujer eh, desahuciada, cuyos hijos eh, quedan también pues eso, mal, el marido también pues, acaba mal, ella acaba mal, todo el mundo acaba mal, todo el mundo en la calle, todo el mundo sufriendo a nivel personal, emocional, psíquico, eh, físico, y dónde vamos con este batallón, ¿no? Sí, perfecto. Así que lo que hacer de ahí es... Ah, perdón, 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 sorry. Eh, que ciertamente sí que hemos empezado a trabajar pues, eh, casos concretos, ¿no? Eh, el por qué, cómo, cómo argumentaríamos esto, por ejemplo, ante el Ministerio de Interior o ante el propio Ministro de, de, de Vivienda. Y entre uno de los, de los ejemplos cuantificables, argumentos así para dar baza a nuestro proyecto, decíamos que eh, España es uno de los países de Europa, donde más menores eh, terminan en servicios sociales por culpa de los desahucios. Entonces, ¿eso qué implica? Pues eh, desencadena pues, una serie de gastos en servicios sociales, en sanidad, en educación, en justicia. Y bueno, y ahí en ese punto nos hemos quedado, pero creemos que, que estaría bien seguir hilando por ahí y eh, obviamente sin dejar de lado el tema de los derechos, pero ciertamente cuando se va a pedir cualquier tipo de presupuesto y más ante la clase política, que desde mi punto de vista pues eh, se demuestra que velan simplemente por intereses económicos. Eh, puede estar bien ¿no? el hecho de argumentar todo esto de manera cuantificable. Es que en, en este punto, sí, sí, en este punto ya es donde ha empezado hoy más... En la historia, entonces, a una de mis compañeras ha planteado que, claro, eh, estábamos devolviéndole la misma patata a lo que hace la administración tal, que es hablar de dinero, de qué forma tal, cuando aquí lo que hay que hablar es de las vidas humanas. Entonces, estamos en esa línea que es tan difícil de separar. Sé que hay, yo me diría ya lo performántico, o sea, ya a nivel personal, yo haría scratches ¿no? a toda esta gente, ¿no? Pero en ese sentido... Es que estamos en la línea, ¿no? Porque yo estoy de acuerdo con una de las compañeras, o sea, 
estamos devolviendo la misma patata, estamos hablando de dinero, de forma de tal. Yo hablábamos de vidas humanas. Um, Vamos, ya estamos ahí. Yeah, so it, that's absolutely, that's absolutely um, right. And I did say to a few of the groups, forget ethics for this exercise because we're pushing a different way of thinking to release resource to the work that is fighting for human rights. And, uh, and those parts of the discussion absolutely come into it, um, but th this is an exercise in looking how an issue can compete on a global stage and we can advocate for those communities that we hold close to our hearts. It is a particular kind of exercise, and your point is absolutely correct that we have to get to the ethics. And sometimes in these, uh, this group I provoked with the name Halliburton, if you know that company, which makes you know, a huge range of armaments and, um, and runs refugee camps uh, you know, for profit and prisons for profit. So it's very de deliberately provocative um, and the ethics absolutely comes into it. That project, evictions and young people and what they cost government through poor policy would get funded even though you think you didn't get all the way there, what we would fund next is a creative development for that group because it's tight, it's global, you're passionate about it, and that could work. It's really, really clever thinking. It just hasn't been articulated yet. So thank you. And we, it, was there a, just one or two funding yeah. possibilities? Uh, Miren, Packard Foundation, uh, lo tenéis que coger un poco por los pelos, un, hay, están trabajando la salud, entonces estáis hablando de, un, de una cuestión de salud pública, eh, culturalmente hablando también. Eh, la formación académica... ¿Perdón? P-A, eh, digo palabras y coged la primera letra de cada palabra. You can come and take a photo on your phone of the... Sí, mejor. Mejor. Ok. Entonces, eh, Calust, eh, que es otra fundación, eh, trabaja la formación académica, el desarrollo social y, eh, curiosamente, en los próximos cinco años trabajan, dan especial importancia a la cohesión. Entonces, si vinculáis esto que vais a presentar a Calust, o que podemos presentar a Calust, con algo que plantea Cisco.com. Cisco.com está buscando proyectos de gran impacto y que tengan elementos en red. En principio, esto es un programa, es un, un problema local, pero que está en muchos sitios. Si se estableciese un trabajo de, en red con tecnología digital que vinculase un trabajo de tecnología digital de gran impacto, se podría trabajar con Cisco. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. I will come back to Spain and work with this group if you want, um, because because Spain, if it's true statistically that Spain has the highest number of any city, any nation in uh, Europe of young people being evicted and that there is a big cost, somebody get the evidence for that. Somebody continue to do what our consultant here is doing, and you, we will find ourselves in a, in the place where we can advocate for human rights well-funded and say no to all the unethical people that we don't want to work with. Excellent. Even though you thought it was a disaster, you, you've got something quite tight there. And you would need to think um, also the way this group was thinking, which is the streams of the issue, the, all the various levels of the system that these young people find themselves in, because that's where we're going to find our ability to appeal to government and to the corporate sector and philanthropists um, for resources to assist with the issue, prove that it can be done, and show that there are savings. Yeah? It sounds cutthroat, but it's advocating for the, the community. Now, this group, we're going to have to... I don't know who the spokesperson is. There's a point more, which is the economy creative in Calust, because it's all a development to plan. Economy creative, and they're financing it, and it's a very powerful group. You uh, S Spanish people are very dedicated because this is like in Australia, beer o'clock, if that makes sense, and we would be out the door. <laughs> right, very quickly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be encouraging you to be super quick.
vamos a ayudar, te vamos a ayudar. Bueno, en nuestro caso también ha sido un poco complicado ponernos de acuerdo. De hecho, no lo hemos conseguido demasiado. Sí, hombre, Pero sí. bueno, sí, vale. sí, lo hemos conseguido. Nuestro proyecto se llama Crea tu propia historia y bueno, a un nivel individual surge sobre una inquietud para poder proporcionar una garantía, una calidad de vida para nuestras hijas y nuestros hijos. Eh, a un nivel comunitario sobre, eh, surge de, de una preocupación por, por lo que está ocurriendo en la escuela a nivel de acoso escolar, en, a nivel nacional y bueno, más concretamente en Madrid, ¿no? Lo hemos dicho al final. Y a nivel, eh, eso, sí, a nivel global, como un intento de, de poder plasmar en la realidad, pues eh, caminar hacia la cultura de paz, un empoderamiento pacifista desde, desde, bueno, desde la infancia. Y, y bueno, pues... Eh, eh, bueno, eh, ahora viene lo de eh, crear tu propia historia... Que, bueno, y decimos, ¿y cómo hacemos esto? Porque eh, Scott eh, nos decía que esto se lo teníamos que proponer a una fabricante de armas. Y ya era como, ¿cómo? ¿Cómo le vamos a vender mmm, cultura de paz a un fabricante de armas? Entonces hemos pensado que, que a través de, de, un mapi, de una app que englobe todo un proceso en la, en, a través de espacios seguros, ¿no? donde los chicos, ya sea de edades entre más pequeños o mayores, eh, pues de repente puedan juntarse y generar una historia o, sea, un, o una obra de teatro, la cual graban cada uno juntos o por separado, se la pasan, cada uno pues bueno, aporta tu tal y a través de una app que se crea específicamente para contar todas esas historias, pues van generando una, una historia a través de su propio personaje. No sé si lo tengo, lo, se me queda algo. Sí, sí. 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 Eh, a ver, eh, es eso, ¿no? Y, y, pero mmm, la idea es, es proponer eh, como que se genere un proceso de vídeos réplicas. Entonces nosotros creamos un, un, a través de un proceso interactivo con, con el alumnado, ¿no? una propuesta artística que tome un, eh, finalmente un formato audiovisual, que puede ser un cortometraje, un videoclip ¿vale? o similar, y que esto sea dirigido por una directora famosa de, de, de aquí, ¿no? pues Isabel Coiset, o ya se decidiría, dependiendo de o quién director, quiera. O director, ¿no? Bueno, sí. Sí, quizá directora por meter un poco la perspectiva de género y así y tal, pero bueno, sí, eso es un debate que estamos en proceso. Pero bueno, pues eh, entonces generar como un vídeo matriz, un vídeo madre eh, por, en, entre nosotros y a través de los medios de comunicación y diferentes vías, YouTube, etcétera, lanzarlo a, a la gente para que en, en cada escuela, ya de una forma más libre, se pueda replicar esta buena práctica y bueno, pues que puedan emerger los, también las historias particulares, se creen historias en, en cada escuela. ¿no? Y es eso. De, 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 de lo de comunitario y personal, ¿no? el tema de saber que estamos en un sitio seguro, que de alguna forma nuestros hijos mmm, se cuidan unos a otros y que están en lo que es el patio seguro, ¿no? Decíamos. ¿Algo más? Ah, ¿que aquí se lo vendemos? Pues a todo tipo de telefonías móviles, eh, televisiones, guionistas, eh, en fin, ¿qué tenemos aquí? Eh, de todo. ¿Alguien? Ah, sí. ¿Alguien da más? Thank you. Ok, um, thank you for that, the script. So to, to wrap that up, there is something in that that could be designed, and I would suggest that you could make it um, pretty uh, a pretty full-on project that makes a big impact around the world, um, because the making of peace is critical. And you chose a good idea: kids who are bullied and taking on an arms dealer like Halliburton but maybe not as short videos, maybe getting into the gaming industry and, um, and create a game in which these bullied kids defeat Halliburton and, and other people. That, and it becomes the most, the most uh, profitable game 
And gaming is an industry that's bigger than world cinema, so there's a lot of money there. Um, and then from that, which would be kind of a, both a, a hilarious story and a very focused on youth culture, you would do a whole lot of evidence-based work behind the scenes and look at the value of making peace. And if peace is maintained, so it's not just keeping peace, but it's making it, what are the costs and savings of that? And then you would find that you were releasing resource whilst at the same time ethically taking the piss out of Halliburton and other arms dealers. So there is something very unusual in that that doesn't have the feel of a community arts project but is quite interesting that where you, that's where you got to. So, um, yes, we better throw some funds at you. Peace, young people, bullying, any of those? Yeah. Sí. Uh, mira, tenemos... Calus de Gulbenkain, o como se pronuncia, eh, desarrolla artes visuales y lengua y cultura. De nuevo, si además de hacer un trabajo que... Eh, y, y trabaja también el desarrollo de investigación. Entonces, si esto conlleva algún tipo de I más D, eh, puede, puede incluirse. Si además, dado que es eh, un capital portugués, eh, nos vinculamos con Portugal, será muchísimo más fácil, porque hay un, un vínculo, un puente. Eh, después, Cisco, de nuevo, que antes estaba desarrollando proyectos de gran impacto en elementos en red, está desarrollando y centrándose en tecnología digital. Eh, y especialmente en soluciones tecnológicas en etapas iniciales. Y esto puede tener una rentabilidad eh, a medio plazo. Por tanto, mmm, ¿Hay alguna posibilidad más de que ese programas de educación en SNF? Por tanto, si vinculamos audiovisual con educación, ahí también hay una brecha. Ok. Good. A round of applause for the consultant and consultants and their work in funding. So, just to finish up, there were only five, I just, no, I think there were ten um, funding organisations on the sheet, yes? Eight, yeah. So we just pulled together very quickly a few funding, big funding organisations that are global. There are 5,000 of them, and this is a critical role for our work here in Spain and your work with the circus in rural areas. This kind of research. Now, my organisation, we were incredibly slack for a long time until we made ourselves do it and paid $50,000 to get somebody to come and change our internal culture and make us look seriously at funding and to be much better advocates, advocates for rural young people and, and our other constituents. It's a serious and critical issue because our, the people that we want to work with rely on us and we live in the richest generation in human history. So, thank you for putting together those streams of ideas. It was deliberately short. That was like two and a half days' work in 40 minutes. It's deliberately pushing us to get out of the complacency of the community arts and to start thinking about um, these, the streams of projects that can work and can draw much more funding towards it to make us passionate about the work. And, you know, hopefully the younger artists here won't burn out like me and, you know, you'll carry on with great careers because suddenly you were well-funded. So thank you very much. The, if anybody wants to, we're going to finish with... Um, a film, uh, like a two-minute piece that's dedicated to your work in, in rural Spain. Um, it's looking at a rural area in Tasmania. It's the poorest part of the poorest state in Australia and it brought farmers who were depressed together with young people, together with high-end musicians and it's just become this incredibly popular thing. Feel free to stay and look at it and we'll be putting it on in a couple of minutes. Thanks. Well done.
Can we... It's the one called Sheds. I think it's the second, the second video. I'll be in English, so I'm an idiot. Number two video. Uh, that's the wrong one. You know, this culture of songs and singing has never um, been very heard much in the last few years in the community. You can see, you know, through yes. singing and jelly, the right. feeling it gives to other people. I want to do an interview with you, boys. Yeah. Can we do an interview about yesterday? Yeah. Hi. What are you, what are you doing there? No, we are just dancing. We are just dancing. We are just like practicing. Practicing. Yeah. Oh, practicing. Oh. I don't know. In the big show. And what are you practicing? Show come up. When the big show. Dance. Then we dance. After that, we are singing a joey. Willie Willie. Six down. Come on, let's go. It's fun, we're having a good fun. But you think of that, what that song means, what you're singing about. The importance of the children uh, being involved in this project, there is this intergenerational way of passing on information. Food, to increase the animals for food. You can amalgamate storytelling, visuals, immerse the culture, bring it back this way and encourage children to become part of the storytellers and then they hold the stories that have been passed on to them through this process. One more night and then all the community are going to be here watching. It's a kind of tapping into the, the, the magic desire in the community for, for good things. That's, that's what we're privileged to be part of. We're going to go on a journey now across the whole of the Pilbara and we're going to tell that journey in song. Through Patrick's very gentle way of teaching language and, and using a mixture of Aboriginal English and language helps our kids make sense of being able to put the Jawi in context of who they are. I know who owns that Jawi or where it's come from and I recognise that person as being my great-great-grandfather. I can see that to go forward, you know, and make things right in a community. And if language, culture and something positive like this project is doing that, then let's keep it going. Yeah. That was, um, that was actually the wrong video, but we will show you the right one now. That's, that's an, a, a very large project in a place called the Pilbara, which is um, in Western Australia. So if you flew from here, you would get to Perth in 26 hours and then fly for another two hours, and then you would drive for 45 minutes and you'd get to this little community. And the biggest companies in the world, Rio Tinto, um, Chevron, BHP, Woodside, uh, they, they are all there mining their country. And it is what's happening in the 21st century where the first world, all of us, is coming, smashing into First Nations people. And that is where um, it's critical for artists like us to work. And what they're talking about, the Jowie, those songs, are like a, 
ancient haiku. They're, it's a tradi tradition that's been going on and on and on, and it's, it's where they maintain their cultural strength. We were in our eighth year with that community, and um, if I had some airline tickets, I'd say, come and visit. <laughs> the, the one um, that we're going to show you, is, it's called The Acoustic Life of Sheds. And it's um, a shed in Australia is like a, a barn, or it's on a farm where you keep the hay and the tractors. Um, and this was about listening in rural communities to farmers who were becoming less and less important and the cities are becoming disconnected from them and um, telling their story via music only by listening to the sheds that are old and, and um, then interpreting that with some very experimental artists. So this is my gift to you and especially to the, I can't see you, the, the circus men. Ah, this is uh, for you because my comment may have seemed a bit harsh when you were talking here. So, it's two minutes. <laughs> That project, um, which is where I live in Tasmania, um, was put together with high-end um, experimental artists and long-term unemployed young people who uh, uh, and young people who are out of school. And it's sort of similar to the kinds of things we were talking about of bringing farmers um, 
uh, young people who are unemployed, those who are outside education, um, with uh, into the landscape and creating an art project in which those young people went back into education, some of them experienced work, farmers were embraced by people, and city audiences drove between these five sheds over an afternoon, um, seeing them all and then having a big party at the end. We did it um, three years ago in a festival. They made us do it again the following year, and now they've asked us to do it again next year in um, three parts of Tasmania. So it, it ends up being um, having a major impact in rural areas. And I just wanted to suggest that it's similar. It's a similar way of thinking. Thank you very much for allowing me to have so much of your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.